See if there's any victims in there. Hey, ma'am. Ma'am, you got a minute? Hi, what's that? Yeah, what happened in there tonight? Uh, I don't know. I was at my friend's apartment at the Oxbow. My little brother is picking me up, so I'm just trying to go home. Okay. That's who I'm on the phone with. All right. But... You know you weren't inside. No, I have no idea what's okay. happened there. I just saw everything coming out, and I was just kind of like, where are you? So I can come see you really quick. <laughs> but, sorry, yeah, uh, I have no okay. idea. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. like the officers have cleared up the problem. Be nice to get a one-on-one -on -one view from somebody that was in there. I had lunch here yesterday, actually. Yeah. Asian salad. Asian chicken salad. Oh, very good. That sounds good. Very good. Yeah. The officers are doing a good job of wearing their masks now. Looks like they're all departing. So, I guess we're departing too. Carry on. Get back to that shots fired. It's my wife's favorite meal there across the street. She is a two minute. It's a Mastacholi from Cassettas. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's, I, I gotta say, I'm thinking about my wife and I, we both like the same food. That's a good thing. Yeah, we both like the same food. Now, do you both like chicken wings? Yeah, but I mean, we're not crazy for chicken wings. But, you know. So does one of you prefer the flat and one of you prefer the drummy? That's the important question. Well, I, I think my son is a huge chicken wing fan. Just huge. He could just eat them nonstop. That's one of his favorite things. He probably gets that from his mom. That's, uh, that's me too. I don't I really like to work wings. around the wings. You know, all the, the bones on the wings, it's hard to work to get all that meat. Oh, that's... I, the drummies are a little easier, but to be honest with you, that the chicken breast from from, uh, from Kentucky Fried is far easier to get the meat out, right? <laughs> you know, so... But anyhow, back here at the auditorium where the hockey used to be before the Civic Center was built, before that was torn down and the XL was built. So 
back in, I think I've mentioned this once before, but back in 76, 1800 and, 1891 of us took the test to become a St. Paul police officer. Oh, you're all sitting at the tables there, the lower part of the St. Paul Civic Center, 1891. Can you imagine that? Wow. There were, I think there were 1,200 that uh, took the test when I... Now there's less than 200. <clears throat> That's sad. Yeah. Now there's less than 200. Well, thank you for coming back to join us on the overtime session. Somebody else labeled it overtime. I like that name. I think that's a good idea. Call it overtime. Some people have to actually get up in the morning, so. Yeah, that rain kind of slows things up. We'll get some rain next for the next time there's rain. For an AOA 35 at Cayuga, state is unavailable at this time. Vehicle is southbound northbound lane, two minute delay, no vehicle description. Well, we got to go to that one. <laughs> southbound in the northbound lane. Well, that doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. So, southbound in the northbound lane. So, well, we're going to try to get on here in the northbound lane. Hopefully, he's not coming right at us. <laughs> but he's probably already past this point. So, we got a vehicle southbound in the northbound 35. And odds are he might even, he might try to get off right here. But we're not going to be able to go southbound in the northbound lane ourselves. But we are going to be able to check the freeway from here. State Patrol can't take it. So we are northbound in the northbound lane and supposedly he's southbound. I hear it right there. The odds so. are that this call is old because it probably came into the state dispatch first. So what we need to do is Get off here and get back on going southbound and southbound lane, right? Yep. See if we can see him. But he's not he's not here at Cayuga. I suppose the other problem is he could have gone. There's a flashing red light up here though. to Cayuga, we haven't seen him. I'll get on the air. Twenty four hundred we checked thirty five from Jackson and tenth of the Cayuga. There's no car southbound in that chunk. Okay, check very far. Check to your ground. Just anything at 120. I should get tired of it. It's alright. 2 2 4. On the plus side, that means you didn't hit anything in that stretch. 2 2 4. Right. Be advised. You may go to PPP at Allery's for me, please. Proactive police sure, visit at Allery's. One of the other problems here is sometimes when people call in, they get confused about north and south. Mm -hmm. you know, could be going north of the southbound lane instead of south of the northbound lane. All right, so now we are south in the southbound lane. We're going to try to make a guess that person stayed on 35E. Peek over the median, huh, Pat? Yep. You can be the spotter. We can see a car. 
car over there. Or an accident. Let's we'll see what. Where he could have gone? Yeah, what the most likely scenario is here. Well, 35 is clear from St. Clair up to 94. So, that means we are, not everybody does it that way. <laughs> we are going to go on 94 and see if it came up that way instead. We just heard the car clear it from St. Clair up. So, the only other possibility is for the car to go on the 94 section, correct? Yep. Heavier than 100 cents, 46. Four street east, just Minnesota building. 10th floor, the garage, gray van. Parked occupied by two or three. So the caller van does this every night for several hours. Well, assuming it's a non intoxicated driver, they would get off as soon as they could, right? Okay, from there you get 35. Not too many non intoxicated kids get, get out in the first place, right? Yeah, not going the wrong way on a freeway. But by now we would have had many, many more calls in. So I'm going to assume that they got off, or, and then let's go, uh, let's go up to the shooting area. What's down there? Right there? I thought I saw some flashing things down below. There are. It's uh, something train related, I think. It's yellow amber lights. Information provided by the ATA driver in West from 75 Simon. Wait out to pick up an old plate, Sharker Tree, Colorado. Focus the mail. Exploring his words, now driving eastbound. Simon's Rickdale. Information was confirmed. Well, what do you think? Should go ahead and get into that or run by the sports bar? I think we should run by the sports bar. Yeah, that's the thing with <clears throat> any call on a car that's moving. There's generally a delay between the time the call comes in and it gets dispatched. And on a night like tonight, there's probably even a further delay because a car is being tied up on other calls. But in either case, there's, we're two districts away. That's the West District. We're in the East District. And there are people that can handle that call. Exactly. But we know that there's always problems at closing at the Mounts Park Sports Bar, so we're we're close enough there that we should check that out and make sure nothing happens at the end of the night. Absolutely. And it's just about closing time. And we were able to stay off of Earl Street to go. Closing time. Another great song. Closing And another great classic movie, Cheers, right? Oh, yeah. Back when Woody Harrelson was a bartender. Woody. Sorry about this rain. We'll try to keep you entertained with our, with our voices. Cause it's really hard to see out there. <laughs> I forgot to turn my sprinklers off. Your what? Sprinklers. Oh. <laughs> Advise on you. Well, they must have cleared it out earlier when they had the problem, huh? Who would have? Uh oh. A few folks hanging out. Looks like they're watching and listening. What's going on? How is it? How's everybody? Did they kick you out? They turned the lights off or what? What happened to the light?
Chicken Channel 2 for a night six two. Was there fights going on tonight or what? Argument. Argument. Hey, where's your Brady shirt? Chicken Channel 2 for 962. Yeah. <laughs> a buccaneer, that's right. Yeah. Well, we, we just came to make sure. All right, thanks, officer. Anybody still inside or not? They they coming out now. Yeah, they said the, the females were causing the problem. Well, that's interesting because, you know, the drive-by on Rose the other night mm -hmm. was a white PT Cruiser. An HHR is kind of that's a, a Is that an HHR or PT? That's, a, that's an that's HHR? That's an HHR, yeah. Okay, it could be. And that same one was at the uh, memorial there. This one here? Yeah. Was, Pretty uh, sure that's the same one. Bravo Tango Hotel 454. We're going to run that. Bravo Tango Hotel 454. Looks like they're getting out of the car. And they do at first glance look a lot like a PT cruiser. Well, now we got another call up on Clark. 896 Clark. Unknown male saying someone is chasing him. That's close enough to that earlier Maryland and arcade call where the shots are north of Maryland and arcade. What the heck? It's starting to rain now. Nobody sure is. Girls driving or what? Didn't tell them that. But that's an HRT, huh? HHR. <clears throat> exact same kind of vehicle that was being chased yeah. two yeah. Wednesdays ago. Yeah. familiar name. Last name for sure. Yeah. yeah, they don't want to seem to get out of the car. Well, we're going to keep that plate in our brains. Yeah. How many are in there still? Probably not the best tactical position, do you think? <laughs> How many you got left in there? How many are left? You got very many people left in there? How you doing? Got very many people left in there? Oh, uh, no, it's just the last one right there. All right. Oh, good. And, uh, all good eh? A little bit of drama earlier, huh? Yeah, and at the end, uh, I had to actually eat some, uh, some ace. Some guys trying to rush the door. 
Oh, really? What was going on? Oh, I was locking up, and they were all trying to go in. That's all. Really? And then uh, I had to deal with that incident on top of a couple of brothers trying to fight at the same time. So Somebody else said it was the women that were arguing. Was that true? Or that? Oh, and, and then there was that, yeah. <laughs> Three of them all at once. You had your hands full so, tonight. So what time were you trying to lock up? You close at 1 so they can't... Uh, we, we locked the doors uh, at what, 12.40? Yep. Uh, bar time was so 12.30. Yep. And then at, at 1 o'clock... So if they try to come here from other bars, they got to be in by a certain time? Uh, yeah, 1240. And then you don't let them in. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, That's a good strategy. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Take care. Be safe. That was the security guard describing to us this evening. By the way, I got new tires. On Monday, I got new tires. Because, uh... You know, at high speeds, you can kind of tell if your tires are getting a little mushy. And you know, this this is a pursuit-rated vehicle with pursuit tires, but if you hit enough curbs or a corner too fast, it, the, the sidewalls get mushy after a while. And so these, and these potholes don't help either, right? No, they We're don't. Back on Earl Street. But... Um, I would just, you know, sometimes when Pat that we were in that chase the other night, and I could tell on the cornering that these tires weren't as firm as they were. You could, because I've I've driven it at high speeds before when it was really really handled nice. So a world of difference, a world of difference with the new tires. And, uh, So we're good to go. All right, Simpson Arcade, Silver Dodge crossover driving reckless in the neighborhood. Well, for 10 minutes. Let's see if we can find it. Maybe he got off the freeway. <laughs> So you probably saw the mayor's the mayor's uh, budget presentation. Mayor Carter is um, putting a hiring freeze on the department, which essentially means that there'll be a loss in the next two years, a loss of 40 police officers. No one's getting laid off. Clearly better than the earlier worry about a $9 million cut where 50 people might have been laid off. But still uh, will have impact on response time over time. And the week before, I think, I don't know if we talked about it, Mayor Fry said he was reducing the Minneapolis Police Department by 100. And I just want you to think about, well, let me just, let me make a metaphor. I'm not faulting anybody, but what's hard for the public is to have inconsistent leadership, right? When one year you're hearing one thing and next year you're hearing another thing, right? Absolutely. So I, I happen to think masks are a good thing for COVID. But if you remember in the very beginning, they told us masks wouldn't do any good. Yep. Remember that? Yep. That was in March. Masks won't do any good. And so now masks are very important. And I happen to agree with that, but it just goes to show you how things can change so quickly. The metaphor I'm making is here... A year or two ago, the Minneapolis police chief was saying we needed 400 additional cops, right? 400 more. 400 more. And now, this year, the mayor is cutting 100. So the net loss of 500 police officers. So I don't know the magic figure for Minneapolis, but I know that as citizens, when people tell us one thing one year and another thing another year, we got to dig in and look for a little more information, right? Yeah. So, uh, but I also know this, you know, I was on the city council in two cities, um, but before I was on the city council, I was a police officer in St. Paul before I was there. And, and I, I have to tell Thank you... you 
there's a lot of things that city council members know and understand. Generally, it's, generally it's economic development and zoning issues. Sorry, and, there's a lot of things that they're really good at, but they don't know much about what's really going on on the street because they're not out there driving around every night seeing it. And so that's why they need to trust their police chiefs and they need to trust the people that they're bringing in those out. positions. So I just, uh, I just think it's important in life to trust the people that have the most experience in that field. Doesn't matter what elected official you are, just trust people that have done it. There's no substitute for experiencing. And so it just, and unfortunately what happens is people go and try something totally different and it falls flat on its face and then no one takes responsibility for the failure, right? I mean, inevitably. Inevitably. So just remember there's no substitute for experience. I used to run into FBI agents and um, you know, young, they usually come here after two years of experience and they would, they'd want to take over a case, okay? And we'd have investigators with 10 or 15 years of experience. But because they were FBI agents and they were young and hard chargers, they think they'd know the best way. And constantly I would have to tell this, of course the older guys were fine. I'd have to tell them, hey, this guy that you think you can do a better job, he's got 15 years of doing this. What makes you think you know how to do it better than him? Well, you know, I went to Quantico and, <laughs> and the reality is, it doesn't matter what job it is, carpentry, you know, find a person that has the experience and then just in, enjoy their experience and use it to the highest benefit. And uh, I just, I just hate to see the world run by people that are guessing at it. You know, if I'm going to fix something, I'm going to call somebody that knows what they're doing because oh, my 14-year-old my probably knows more about well, looking at YouTube how to fix things than I do. But there's some things I'm really good at. But if I'm not good at it, don't pretend to be good at it. So, I don't know. That's my speech for tonight. You got anything you want to add to that, yeah, old, uh, old timer? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you appoint somebody who is, through experience, an expert at what they do. Yeah. For instance, a police chief. Trust them on policing issues. Trust your parks and rec guy on yeah. parks and rec issues. Trust your public works person on how to plow the streets and when and how often? Leave whatever the topic is, whatever their level, their area of expertise is. Yeah. Leave it with them. Well, and if, if 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 it's if it's a total failure, replace the person with another experienced person, maybe more experienced or whatever. But don't try to don't try to subject your judgment when you don't have experience. Right? I mean, that's the... It's common sense. That's the problem. And, um, you know, and I do think, I do think this whole issue of political appointments, um, you know, we need to have chiefs and sheriffs that are able to stand up and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. In St. Paul, the police chief has a six-year term. <clears throat> it's always been that way, a six-year term so that they can be outspoken. In Minneapolis, I think it's a three-year term now, which makes it a far more difficult for Chief Hernandondo to speak his real mind, you know? Yep. A lot of cities have will and pleasure chiefs. That means that if the city manager, administrator doesn't want them, they're gone. But if you really want honest leadership, you need to have uh, some security in the police department for the chief so they can speak about what they think. 
you know the needs are. Okay. So. Got to run down here a little bit just to. friends at this end of the east side. We're eastbound on Maryland at Johnson Parkway. And it doesn't sound like we're going to get a lot more calls, but we will get some at 2 o'clock, 2.30 when the bars close, once and for all. No so doubt. Pat and I will be here till around 3 with 911 overtime. <laughs> When I share these videos, it's no longer going to be part two. It's going to be overtime. Yeah, part, there you go, overtime. We could have gone for a pizza tonight, actually. Oh, that's going to make Somebody nice. said we should call this uh, Live on Patrol with Bob, Pat, and Pizza. <laughs> I'm not really opposed to that. So what else can we talk about then? Find this phone and see if people are... I saw one suggestion that was... Hey Craig, can you by chance send me 329 call with us? We'll further so I can get that information. Copy. Hey, Roy. I'm getting voicemail on multiple call backs. You're correct, and the Roy Wilkins, the audit, actually the, the auditorium got renamed to Roy Wilkins. D, if you're wondering, it wasn't always Roy Wilkins, but it was renamed there in the 80s. And actually I was on the St. Paul, what was it, Civic Center board at the time when we renamed it. It was during George Latimer's era, again I'll say. George Latimer, one of the finest elected officials I ever was. Regarding the budget, the mayor's proposed budget will be analyzed by the city council. They'll be able to add or subtract. A couple of them have already indicated they'd like to cut some more from the budget. But I don't know that's... Uh, Oh, the majority. So now the afternoon cars are going home at two o'clock. They're checking out. So there'll be less cars on the street, which actually, in a strange way, makes our presence so after, after 1:45 more important. Where's my mom, Dougal? I think I lost it. Right is that, there. Is that yours or not? That's yours. Oh, God yeah, bless you. Just gotta make sure these people don't get shot up again. It's gotta be hard to be neighbors of a house that gets shot at on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, it's Few, year, year, well, years ago, probably 20 years now, in the Western District, there was a house way out on La Fond that had at one time been uh, rented by a very active drug dealer who was also very violent and got in a lot of gunfights and had several drive-bys done on his house. And the poor family that... Uh, moved in after him, people didn't realize that the guy had moved out. Oh. And had a couple drive-bys done on the house. Oh, and they uh, put up a big banner across the front of the house announcing, Omar doesn't live here anymore. So and so had moved, yeah. Yes. That's funny. Let's see what we can figure out here. Okay. 
150. I think we're going to be clearing here shortly. Be a couple minutes. Yeah, we'll head that way as soon as we can. Take it up. Somebody's out in this parking lot sort of jumping up and down. Did you notice that? Just out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. I don't know that she's celebrating the rain. Well, something's going on here. She could be intoxicated. Let's see what we got going here. Hi, everything okay? You okay? You all right? 2007. I'm close you sure? to right now, but uh, no, 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 no. nobody's telling me who was shooting out here. Let's pat. That's uh, Mike somewhere. What did I do? Send me this. Shots fired at Billy's. 857. Grand, we got an off duty guy working there. She didn't want her help. Well, she's yelling at this guy over here. So anyhow, our off-duty deputy, Mike Martin, working at Billy's on Grand. Some shots fired. It says he can't find out. He doesn't know who the shots fired are coming from. Yeah, okay. You had just been mentioning earlier. Sometimes we just take what's in the mail for anything that she did not need any of. Usually they're just stressed out. But I know, you know that, that parking lot behind uh, that we were at last time where the four cars were? Yep. Tavern? Uh, yeah, behind the Grand Tavern. No, it was Pierre. What was the name of that place? The liquor uh, store? The, uh, the heck is it called? Yeah, it used to be Ramali's. I can't think of what it was. Sorry with Pino, but uh, Tony Dean will tell me if he's still listening what the name of that. That's where they probably shots were coming from. The suspect vehicle was a black Acura that went eastbound on Grand. The suspect vehicle was a black Acura lasting eastbound on Grand. What did we get? Another black Acura. Yeah, I hope we do. Tony, I hope you didn't release that Nobody one. Nobody was hit. Oh, go clear. Good. Well, we better go over there and help find the black Acura. Probably gonna go downtown though. Maybe the calories. Calories, yeah. Information is caused not shots fired in the west from 87 Grand. So six vehicles of black Acura left in East Southern Grand. No further at the time. Information was Friday. The one they towed and searched earlier today from Winnipeg is still in the impound lot. 27. 27. Transporting a mail to 1076 Lafond. 1076 Lafond at 1. And this will be clear assisted. I'll be in route. Oh, yeah. We got, we got more Mountain Dew from those girls right in the back. I forgot about that. Ah, you ready for one? Well, grab it. Yeah. You got to stay sharp, right? Ouch. Got to stay sharp. I got to do my seatbelt. Okay, I think I need a Twinkie, too. <laughs> Gotta stop for a cherry pie. We haven't stopped much tonight. We haven't really had a break. Clear report. So I want to tell a story. There used to be a YMCA over here on arcade. Remember the YMCA? Oh yeah. I took my first swimming lesson there. I have a call 1508 20th Avenue Northwest. There's a blacked out vehicle that approached the cop trailer. It's parked down the block. Swimming lessons. Eight years old. Beginners. The YMCA. There's a great question. Okay. Okay. 
you know that they it was just boys. You know that back when they first developed those pools with the filters, they made you swim naked. No, I didn't know that. It's the gospel truth. <laughs> That's well true. So you had to take your swimming lessons naked as an eight-year-old. That's historical fact. <laughs> and uh, very embarrassing. Last day when the parents came to watch you to see if you passed, you had to swim along the side of the pool. You got to put a suit on. But because they were worried about you, Twenty one six four, we transport. Twenty one six four, go again. Twenty one six four, we transport one juvenile female by location to twenty twenty six. It was just a historical fact. Right? Seven five nine. Ah, you make me laugh. <laughs> you tell great stories. Well, it was, I mean. <laughs> No one would believe it nowadays. How stupid. <laughs> Truth is, in John Glenn Jr., in seventh grade, when I was 12 years old, they were still doing that for swimming lessons. Really? For gym class. Yeah. It had something to do with ruining the filters. You didn't want your, a lot of kids had cutoffs and the, the fiber would, you know. I suppose. I don't know. Weirdest thing, teaching kids to swim by skinny dipping. <laughs> Actually, it was John Glenn Pool. I ended up lifeguarding there years later. Because I was mostly a lifeguard when I was younger. John Glenn Pool, Silver Lake, and North St. Paul. Yeah, okay. A lot of kids how to swim out there, but... I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but John Glenn Pool and Maplewood Pool passed on a referendum by one vote. One vote. That's how they got built. Because they, they went to the public to decide if they should build it. One vote. One vote. Another example of the importance of voting. Minutes requesting please respond stating that there is a female party who fell down the stairs and some believe that was intentional in order to harm herself. Female party is being agi is agitated. So we're southbound on Jack, so yeah, apologize right going into downtown just to see if we can come up with a Puppy. black Acura somewhere near Allery's. It's the only bar left that's open after uh, Billy's and the tavern and and so, if they're going to hook up with any friends at all, it would be down there. We just turned south on Jackson from Acker, crossing over Pennsylvania right now. Yeah. Those two bars at the corner of Jackson and Acker? Classics. Back shortly after I came on, uh, we, were, we were all taught how to process for fingerprints back when we came on. Yep. And I still got my fingerprint kit in my office. Do you? I saved it. <laughs> so, uh, and we'd process for fingerprints at, routinely at burglary scenes and sometimes auto thefts. Well, one of those bars one night, they, there was a burglary where they went in through the roof. And while they were doing the burglary, we could tell that they had sat at the bar having some beers. Fascinating. So I committed a cardinal sin that I was told never to do, but I picked up one of the beer bottles to dust it for fingerprints yeah. by sticking my finger in the oh, neck of the bottle. That seemed to make sense. Make sense on yeah, the surface. There's no DNA back then. And as I started dusting it, with the powder, yep. that knocked it off my finger. It went, and I could see there was a perfect oh. fingerprint on it. And it went straight to the floor and shattered into hundreds of pieces. And I lost Happy. the fingerprint. That's not good. No. 
Yeah, that's happened. So it was Black Acura fired shots up by Billy's bar. Right, Kevin, can you record this? Billy's on Grand, but no one was hit. We don't know at this point. It wasn't probably it wasn't apparently in there because we have an off-duty deputy working there, and he reported just hearing the shots. So it doesn't sound like it was necessarily right. It was just in the area, in the area of the bar. And there's a couple other places that it could be. One fifteen, copy and the Highland Appliance Center for an alarm. Covers the kitchen motion. So, I'm not very good with cars, but I know that was a black Acura that was seen at, uh, where was it, babe? You know what, that's, I mean, it's a little larger than that car, right? Not necessarily. Right, that's, on the phone? Actually, that second one in line might be. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to press in. See how crowded it is. Oh, down. that's crowded. This is a... Sixty nine twenty one truck. Not an accurate. Sixty nine twenty one. That's a Toyota. Put me out at Larkin Fulham. Both minutes away since Edward, Mary, Victor, three nine one. I never know how victims or witnesses of shootings can identify a car that fast when it's driving by. Can I get another spot started? Six and ten will be around. Okay. We've got to figure out a way to get our windshield clear for these viewers. Juice. A little bit of juice. Yeah. Well, what time is it? 1.59. Yeah, this place is going to start emptying out pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it came to him in LA, uh, right up Bowl Street. I just want to go again. Do you want to eat this again? Yeah, it's got a strange feel to it, right? But it yeah. does. I don't, actually little... feel, I don't actually feel safe sitting that close, do you? No. But, uh, Maybe. How many people with, uh, that didn't seem to like us? <laughs> Felt like a little bit of tension in the air. Yeah, let's see what we're doing instead. Get a better picture of. Yeah, I like this better. Yeah, the original owner here at Al, Al or is Al, he's such a great guy. Is that accurate? 180 OT. Have a good day. Cool. No, that's a BMW. Never mind. screaming going on. Oh yeah. All right. 
so I'm, gonna, I'm just, I, I gotta tell this little history. Al Basie, we used to own this, played for the Chicago Bears in the 1940s. It was pretty tough. Some people call him an SOB. <laughs> 1949, he partnered with Larry Leonard to run Allery's Bar. By the 60s, only he owned it. I think it was on Wabasha back then, wasn't it? It originally was up there, but he was still alive when it moved down here. Mm -hmm. In 2005, he passed away. But uh, got a picture of him in the online there when he played for the Bears. Kind man. Always treated law enforcement good. Yeah, big supporter of law enforcement. So was his son who took it over. And and a supporter of firefighters too. Mm-hmm. After September 11th, a lot of firefighters would hang here as well. There was a time when there were squad car doors from all over the country hanging from the ceiling in there. Yeah, there was. You're right. We're going to have a change of plan. I'm transporting my juvenile to the Hilton Garden next door. You can show me arriving, and you can change this to a dispute and was, clear advice. Whenever there were out-of-state officers here in town on on an investigation or to take a fugitive back to their jurisdiction, yeah. this was always a spot where we made sure to take it. Yeah, we used to host uh, some of the some of the survivors of the 9/11 towers came here, you know, and we had we hosted them for some of the parades, and we would visit with them here. Nice, terrible thing. 343 firefighters passing away. It was horrible. I'll never forget that number. Imagine them. Imagine running down the stairs while the firefighters are going up, and then after you get out of the building, it collapses, knowing that they're all in there. And they went there knowing that was probably going to happen. And they went anyway. I don't know. They might have known it was a possibility, but who would think those buildings are actually going to come down on themselves like that? That was unbelievable. Well, we're hanging here in part because we had a shooting up at Billy's and we know outside of Billy's by the tavern up there we know some of the clientele from Grand Avenue comes down here later at night because some bars close at 1, 1 1.30 some close at 2, 2.30 81 ideas not related to your call your own And as soon as the earlier bars close up, the ones that stay open late fill up. Now, this is the only one I think when we decide citywide that stays open until 2, 2.30? Okay. Yep. This is it. So for those of you just tuning in, we're just uh, sitting outside Allery's Bar. Just hoping our presence helps keep the peace. That's the whole goal, just keep the peace. Keep intoxicated people from doing something stupid. <laughs> There's nothing to break and start towards 683 Bedford for a man down be in front of the address. Forty-seven ten Cumberland, room. Oh, two copy. Good. 
Kathy. Yeah, I need to disconnect with no answer and call back. Oh, the first to yawn. 2.07. Maybe you were yawning earlier. I don't know. I yawned earlier. I can't lie. Can you I'm wide the awake now. Pardon me? I'm wide awake now. Sure, sure, Captain. Uh, kind of wishing I'd have grabbed a hot dog or something on one of our stops. Yeah, we should have got there before. We should have got to Holiday for a hot dog. 27. We didn't stop. We're sitting with 124. I wonder when the trend started in front of wearing pants with a lot of holes in them. <laughs> it's, it's come and gone a couple of times. Yeah. My daughter would always. She's older now, but. Copy to it. What was the bar over by the Hoonan that used to be busy like this? Was it the Hoonan? Hoonan Garden. Hoonan Garden. Oh. Yeah, that was a that was a hot spot for a while. I think it's fair to say that from our viewpoint, we're looking in the window here that of the 75 people that were inside, not many had masks on. Would you say that? I would say that. A couple of them. Not many. Ooh. Just gonna pull down, pull back. Hey, you're preaching that word. Close both the medics. We're in unit one. Please you know that company can be closed for medics. We'll be in unit one at 210. Looks like a 40 year old male claiming of having breathing issues related to COPD. I think that's an Uber, huh? Maybe not. Yep, I think it is. Copy at 211. Good. Always a wise choice when you do. Just advise the caller say that the two of them are waiting outside. Line is disconnected and getting voicemail from callback. Another okay. disorderly call at the Marlins Park Sports yeah. Bar. I don't think that's possible. They were emptying out of there. I'm just going to hang here for a few minutes. Yeah, I think this is a good spot to be. 8195. 8195. Just pretend like we're Ubers. <laughs> I'll be primary. I need, a, I need a purple light. There you go. Purple light for the Uber. Jeez, that looks like uh, that actor. Uh, I know he's a little Yeah, he's a little older now than that. Uh, I get nervous anybody's running out of a parking lot. Copy Let's see if the call comes off. Cause <laughs> there aren't many people that run out of a parking lot. A little bit of arguing going on now, huh? Yeah. You know, I maybe I, you know, maybe I could fix some of that moisture by putting some warm air on. What do you think? That might help. One six two. One six two. Eight five six Carol Avenue for a domestic. Caller's ex girlfriend punched him in the face. Also tried to strike his vehicle with hers. She's driving a black Ford Focus. Suspect is a Michaela Huseman, black female, 24 years old, five foot six, wearing a black shirt, black pants. Tuff is waiting in his oh, car. Put a little, a little warm air up there just to get that moisture to evaporate. This 
going to okay. Am I honest? I think so. out by 2.30 at the latest. How you doing? Yeah, and I don't get the appeal of standing in the rain. Disposition on the sports bar. 7126. The place is going to be Charles George George. How are you doing? Well, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. All quiet? All quiet? As quiet as it can be. Are they still in there or not? I'm... No, the bar's clear now. Okay. Oh, good. That's the last one. What time do you clear? I know you get them out by 2 30 or what's your goal? Or how do you we try 2 15. 2 15? That's good. But and how's it work? What time? What's the last time you let them come in? Huh? It really depends on... You let them come in at 1.30 if they come from... Yep, from tonight Montgomery? I actually shut the door at, uh, like, 1 and went to 1 and went out. We were starting to get too full. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, we came by here earlier. And, uh, yeah. you know. Well, it rained. We have a, we have a patio yeah, in the back. Right, so we got oh, okay. rushed in. There's a tent out there, and then they had pulled the umbrellas for the tables for the tents. For the, for the tables. You know, we're not health inspectors, but, I, you know, obviously you got a lot of glass there. We didn't see a whole, a whole lot of masks going on in there. <laughs> so, we, the health inspector was through on, I think, uh, like 10 days ago. Yeah. When we had uh, talked a lot, he said, well, what do you want us to do? Like, we, we have the sign in the front door. We have free masks in there. Yeah. Everybody at the front door, like, do you have a mask? And they say, yes, put it on. They say, no, like, there's one right here. Grab one. Yeah. You know, and he's like. He told us that we were doing exactly what we're supposed to do. We don't want you guys getting the connotations over it. City, state, or county health department? Do you know what it was? Well, so St. Paul doesn't have a city one. It's a county one. County well, city is Well, they were from Minnesota. Yeah, they were. They were, they were Minnesota. Yeah, MDH. MDH, okay. And truthfully, if I'm being honest, yeah. the issue's really after about 1245. After what? About 1245. Okay, you mean because the numbers or because there's compliance earlier? Because of the, the demographic shifts. Yeah. In fact, uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to start closing at 1 a.m. Okay. Well, everybody closes at 1, and then they all come to your place. You know that, right? Yeah. Well, so, like, it's been, like, a shell game. Because, like, yeah. McGovern's was open until 2 until 2 weeks ago. And right. then Billy's open, like, you know what I mean? So now that we've been the only one open until 2 around here that I know of for the last week and a half, and it's not worth it. 
So we're gonna start closing at one. All right. All right, we're gonna run. Looks like you got it cl taken care of. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Thanks. Hey, have, have a good, a good one. Have a good one. Sounds like the Audi that you're looking for from the shooting might be over at the Mounds Park bar. That's the intel we just got while we're sitting there. Switch back to switch back to channel three. Well, what shooting was that? With the oh, the shooting up on Grand. Oh. Was it, maybe Audi, maybe that was an accurate. Maybe, maybe they meant accurate. I don't know. It says Audi here. 115 will take it and cancel it. I don't know if it's entered wrong or if it is an accurate. Or if it's related. But that thing's, that place is closed down anyhow, right? Right. I was trying to read oh, the screen, but I can't read it. Yeah, it's a terrible night to be homeless. Uh, I read that's not terrible, but wet, soaking rain. Mm -hmm. Something ain't right about that car. Here, hold yeah, on to this. I think you're Did right. you see that one there? Yep. Seventy-one twenty-six. Checking your status. Nice maneuver. <laughs> Information from Central and Eastern Tide. Dispatcher Council Two is two nineteen. Twenty-six twenty-six. Checking your status. Twenty-six twenty-six. Checking your status. So eastbound 94, going to get off on Mounds Boulevard here. Something's still going on over there. We're just going to check out the Mounds Park situation. I want to personally thank Pat for putting up with my driving. Pat, Pat's going to get his license back. Since he retired, he doesn't have his license. And, but once he gets his back, then, uh, then I'm going to let him torture me. <laughs> So, and we're not talking driver's license, we're talking no, peace officer peace license. Peace officer license, because he, he let his license lapse when he retired, and then he came back to work as an analyst, and um, I want him to get his license back, because he's got so much experience. I want to get him back working on a, on the street, and then I can be the passenger. <laughs> he can be the driver. But... is when you drive like a police officer it's not always the most enjoyable ride when you're the passenger so when you're in charge of the car and control the car you, you know it feels you got to have a lot of trust with the guy that you drive and uh in this case, I just want to thank you. I here. feel like I'm in good hands. Oh, thank you. Take it as you're My wife would prefer to be the driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
She's a pretty good driver too. My wife Trish, who was a commander with the St. Paul Police Department, always drove. <laughs> I was always the passenger. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, as long as Pat mentioned Trish, uh, she tragically passed away from a long battle. Uh, it wasn't just actually that long when you think about it, but a tragic battle with cancer. Yeah, I was unfortunately uh, nine months from diagnosis until she passed away. Yeah. Terrible. She's a wonderful person. I remember her when she started as a parking enforcement officer, right? Yep. Yep. About the best cop I ever knew. Can you when I try red? She did a lot of good things for people too. All right, so we're back here at Mounds Park Sports Bar. I don't know what the hell's going on here yet, but two vehicles made threats are parked outside. Threats made by a black male in his 30s. We'll pull up. We'll see if these guys can tell us what the heck is going on. I just want to say those hats are very stylish. Those hats. We haven't seen any hats for a while out here, huh? I had the specs on, it just keeps the rain That's off. good. That's yeah. why I always had to wear mine. <laughs> Don't say anything about the Chiefs, because you're on live right now. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, live we're live right all the way to it. What, so, what, tell, we were here several times. What happened this time? Uh, Stan said that they bounced a couple of people out. Yep. Stan, people were outside, said that uh, they were going to shoot up the place, or they had, they had got there and started making some guns out here. There wasn't an Acura scene here, was there? You know, from the, the shooting over, we had a shots fired over on Grand by Billy's. They said it was a white SUV and a white Audi. A white, they're both white? Yeah. Okay, yeah. the ones over there are black. Yeah, yeah we, we're, making, we're making rounds like every day here. Yeah, we, we come every, we work every Friday, but it, this place uh, has a lot of people, a lot of energy. But they've been closing a little early. Allery's is the only one staying open really late. Downtown. Yeah, he got his early, early at one, not yeah. letting people in around midnight. Yeah, that's what he said. He said he's, he's, they do let them in when they come from other bars. Well, thank you. Thanks so for the. The saloon shuts down at 10. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, General yes, sir, MacArthur. Sir. Thank you. First set of guys we've seen with hats on, right? Yeah. A little, little rain, rain protection. Copy that. You said northeast. Yes, sir. All right. We'll see when we find it. Any ideas? No. Right ahead. Squad 2165 and 2163. Thank you. Nice. Well, nice. 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 I believe the shots were fired. You know, the bars are closed, it ought to be winding down a little bit. Big five copy. 2163. Thank you, and 2163, I see you're on the call at 227. Copy. Hello. Hello. Back to Trish, just tell us a I little more about her and about some of the things she did with some people that she did some special things for, with Amanda and others. Oh, she was uh, 
dear friends with uh, Marie Hugh, who was a uh, the secretary for the homicide unit. Yeah. And Marie's husband murdered her. And she uh, kind of took uh, took the Hugh children under her wing. And Amanda Hugh, Marie's daughter, ended up uh, becoming a police officer here in St. Paul and is now a highly respected sergeant on the police department. It's a great, it's a great story how she just took and invested herself in that family and those kids. I don't know how old Amanda was right, at the time, here. but 16, I'm, six, I think somewhere 16 to 18. Yeah, yeah. And she became a mother figure for her. The entire family too. 111 call time was 147. And another one of the girls is a police officer in San Diego. 62. 162. It's a great, great tribute. Can you change this Absolutely. to a DOC? It'll be clarified. 220. And she worked a lot of other cases too that were. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, uh. She had a pretty high clearance rate in the homicide yeah. unit. She worked uh, when they first started a gun unit. She was in the gun unit. If you don't mind me asking, just because I never could figure out how she fell for you, <laughs> uh, how did how did all that? How did you meet her, and how did you convince her that? That you were the one. That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's a good question. I uh, I met her when she was a parking enforcement officer, also. And uh, we just kind of uh, we knew each other, but ran in different circles through our time on the police department. And. Uh, she, uh, my previous wife, to Trish, uh, passed away in February 12th of 2012, and Trish was just a wonderful friend who I could talk to and cry on the shoulder of whenever I needed to, and, uh, was just there and a couple of years after my wife Leslie had passed we uh, were just hanging around together and I one night said hey uh, why don't we call tonight a date and so you mean you're, you were at the Sherwood nope nope <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was at Bennett's Chop House, Bennett, okay. down on 7th Street, the old Mitch's. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, uh, right from that first date, cool. we bo both later told each other that we knew it was going to happen. Yeah. So it, I was sure I was never going to be involved with anybody again, ever be married again. And she, Trish, swept me off my feet. Bravo, six five four you Well, that's a good story. I would have, I would have never predicted the two of you being together, but that's the way life is, isn't it? That's the truth. We always got teased by the younger cops when we'd be at be out at a party or run into them at a bar. We were always holding hands. <laughs> nice. Well, there you have the inner soft side of Pat Scott. A man who's seen 
tragedy, occasional triumph. That's the thing, I think a lot of people forget that the cops out on the street are just regular humans with regular struggles. Everybody's got a story, you know, with a family issue. And sometimes people think they only see police certain videos who they really are. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, there's, you know, there's sadness to it, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm a very fortunate man. I had two really great loves in my life. And I'm fortunate for every moment I was able to spend with them. Two incredible women. Eight first reduced the Commerce Building, anonymous caller reporting disorderly. Male attempted to assault caller, friend came over with a gun, five minutes delay, waiting for the info. Commerce Building. Just to clarify, is the comms friend had a gun to protect him or the suspect did? This is downtown, though, right? Are we yeah. emerged? For updates, blackmail. Late 20s to 30s, 5'8", thin bills, a known jacket, wearing jeans, had a gun, a second suspect, number two, a black male, no shirt, short. head down there anyhow, huh? Yeah. Refresh my recollection though, which one is the Commerce down on 4th and 5th Street down there? I'm thinking. That's where it used to be. 4th Street. Well, what do you think the best way? Information. Let's see here. original suspect's friend had the gun, not a friend of the callers. Eight East, so right off of. Hey, one, high five, excuse me, you can send me to that medical. Everybody's got guns now, it is just amazing. Yeah. Like five copy, and 8197, if I can free you temporarily to back to nine five. From the Fifth Medics 2287 Palmer Drive, at the crossroads of the ring for a person sleeping between the main entrance doors. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, 235. up there, Pat, okay. Uh, it's 4 I don't know. It's pretty tough. We're under the PCM. I'll check on your disturbance. Yeah, it's hard to focus six, six, in. Six, 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 Oops. Dropped a mountain dew on the floor. Parkway Unit B. At Four Seasons Air Specialist for an alarm. It's covering interior motion. Oh, yeah. Commerce What's building. Oh. Sherman Rutzik used to own the Commerce building. That's what I was. Sherman Rutzik. I know her. I lived in Highland Park. This address says 75 6th Street, number 201. Additional call, no more protection, violation. Anonymous neighbor is now calling in, arguing that she has a tailor and will take them to refuse to return back into her, her apartment. Is that the same call? No, different call, but it sounded like it was in the same quadrant. Go to assist. No evaluation. It's an OFB. Order for protection violation. Clear the front counter. They're going on. Thank you, Ben. 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 Thank you, Ben.
Two troopers over there. Got a little meeting. Okay, two minutes on. Richard, I go ahead. Sorry, cancel 316, we'll take it. Okay, 316, sir. Okay, thank you. While we're going to this call, I'm going to call Mike Martin, who is the deputy working up there at the Billies. Call Mike Martin. And uh, see what he has to tell us about the shooting. We'll continue on the way to the conference. Okay, you want to tell us about that? Right? Yeah. Hey, Bob. Michael, we're still live, but give us hey, and the, our viewers an update. What happened up there? Ah, uh, there was apparently there was a fight between some girls in the alley um, behind. Billy's, and then afterwards, uh, there was a car that drove around the front and then fired shots as it came by about a half a block away. Okay. So, no shell casings or anything. Um, we looked all over. Um, so, uh, St. Paul squads and state patrol looked for the vehicle, um, but we're unable to locate it. Uh, um, how were things at Billy's otherwise? Other than that, it was fine. It was very busy, but uh, no, no problems. Um, there weren't even any problems leading up to it. I had actually gone inside at the end because they were pushing everyone out. And, uh, um, then people came running in saying there were shots fired. Alright. Are you working so there? So fortunately no one was hit. Are you working there tomorrow night too? Yes. Okay. Well stay safe. I'll wear I'll wear two vests tomorrow. All right. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for the Stay safe, too. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. So there's no case of female neighbors. No, we're just either away. And she'll be waiting out front. Thank you. The commerce is that next one, right? Yeah, with the awning, I think. It's unclear. She keeps disconnecting. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Black male, no shirt, no shirt, shorts, late 20s. Can I get Has the gun. Well, this is kind of bizarre. Put a flashlight on this guy. Yep. Comp does not want to be seen. She's a girl. I can't tell. Girl, security guard up here. Did you call about a problem in the building? She, she, your cousin called us. Which one? It's her car. Now, does he supposedly have a gun? And they were having a problem with your sister too? Okay. Did you notice what they were wearing? Did you see which way they went? Park. At, the, at the park? Yeah, probably not a okay. bad idea. Thank you. You bet. What's going on, partner? You, you got the contract for this building? Or? Did you hear the call? But you haven't seen anything. 
Got it. Oh, good friendship. All right. Very good. I said the comp didn't want to be seen. No. I don't know. Could still could be somebody Roman, but who knows? Yeah. Nice car, by the way. Is he the guy who was with the motorcycle yeah. crash earlier? Yeah. yeah. Must be a contract security company for that building. Put his headlights on. <laughs> that is amazing how a guy, a homeless guy, can alert someone that their headlights are off. I mean, it wouldn't be even be, you know. Priority. Yeah, you wouldn't think. You know, struggling like that. Somebody sent us a text saying they'd like to see the next theme song be the one from Dragnet. <laughs> that would be a classic. Just the facts, man. The second version, the remake with Ackroyd, was a classic. Yeah, that was pretty good. Ninety-one seventy-four. Ninety-one seventy-four. Naked, well, naked gun. I have an, uh, an unsecured door. It's gonna be what? Sweet D, David. What's that? What were we gonna say? Naked gun with Leslie door. Nielsen. Oh yeah. <laughs> you gotta really get into that kind of humor. Accredited blue shooter, some of the finest of all time. We'll give it 15 more minutes here and then we'll call it a night. Starting to quiet down. Whereas last time we said that, 3 o'clock, it took off. We might have to work in the afternoon one day, huh? Seems I think like, so. Seems like there's more activity now in the afternoon than ever. Yeah. We'll try to get out sometime this next week. You notice we didn't have to get any gas tonight because I filled up before we started.
say it's been a great addition to the city, sir. A fine school of law enforcement there as well. Come on up to them. Got some interesting conversations going among some of the professors here about police reform. I've listened to a few of them talk on the issue. Good, good, healthy discussion. The trap for one dollar mail from my location to uh, the area of Central and to San Juan. I'll let you know when I get there. I miss the old Have strip club restaurant that used to be in that space. Yeah, that was a that was a good space. But let me just say this: right now we're at. One of the finest pizza places in town. Absolutely. Carboni's Pizza, corner of 7th and Mariah. I think right now I'm just hungry for that pizza. I don't, I don't know what their hours are now because of COVID, but they make a very fine pizza right there. I think they were the first place to cut it into squares. Oh, I think you might be right there. 7th and Mariah. Another fancy place I used to take my wife to. <laughs> you charming devil of you. I just want to thank my wife for staying up and listening to us. You know, it's got to be punishment, right? <laughs> So this time of night, we do start seeing um, theft from autos, late night stuff in parking lots, a lot of it in the suburbs too. Mm -hmm. People uh, prowling around, sometimes garages. There are people that wait until everybody's kind of in for the night before they come out do some of their stealing. For some reason, haven't seen a, a whole lot of it the last few years. But there was a, a, a subset of criminal, the creeper burglars, who do nighttime residential burglaries of occupied homes. It seems to have dropped off a bit. Well, it's a unique skill. I was, I talked about it once, once. I don't think you were here that technically, you know, because I was in the burglary unit for a number of years, only 15% of burglaries occur when someone's in the house. It's a relatively small number. Only like 3% involve some type of confrontation. But that is a unique thing. Remember, I don't know if you remember David Hobbs. He used to always try to go in through a kitchen window or, or try to go to a woman's purse is almost always in the kitchen area. So they bring it in, leave it in the kitchen area, and he'd look. He didn't want to go necessarily up in the bedrooms where people were, but he wanted to get to the purse for the wallet and all the stuff that might be in there. But He's been in jail so many times, in and out of jail, and there there aren't a lot of those kinds of guys you know, that are willing to take that risk, partly because nowadays it's so easy to commit other crime with less consequences. Right. That's, that's the problem. 80% 80, 80 of crime is, has an economic nexus to it in terms of you know, people stealing for, for money, usually for drugs. 
seven and one eight nine. So But yeah, they're not as active as nighttime occupied ginger burglars are not as active as they used to be. But there's so many other ways for people to make it. I mean forging checks, you know, became big and huge. Okay? Oh yeah. Credit card theft now is again an alternative way to make money. And in many cases people are trying to make money to support a drug habit, of course. Yeah. That's a huge factor in the I'm going to run down Roy Street, then I'll take you back to the barn. Sounds good. I think the most prolific occupied residential burglar of my career was Michael Williams. Hey, don't have oh, yeah. yeah, he, was he was dangerous, too. Very dangerous. He, uh, in fact, he killed a woman. Yep. Lily, Lillian Cooler yep. on Goodrich Avenue in 1987 during a during an yep. occupied burglary. Yep. Johnny up. Capers was another one. I don't know if you remember him at all. He he raped a woman on Grand Avenue. Yep. David Hobbs probably was the burglarized more houses than anybody, but I don't think he ever had a physical confrontation. Three one six. Can you call the compact and see where they're at? I'm not finding them. Wait, you three, you can't be three five one eight. Run down right some one more time, huh? I think we should. Well, we handled a few calls tonight. Problem is, when we handle calls, the, the viewers don't get to see the call being handled, right? That's true. Some you just can't, you can't just let go. You have to deal with it. Boundary all closed up over there? No. Yeah, it sure is. Well, anybody that's still up at three o'clock, God bless you, thank you for uh, hanging out with us till three. That's very kind of you. being a part of our patrol team. If you go to sleep now, rest assured there's not much activity out here. There's some here no lights. Oh, there's a guy without lights. There you go, DBF 311. Delta Bravo Foxtrot 313. Delta Bravo Foxtrot 
So all the speedways got bought by 7-Eleven. That's what I heard. First the Super Americas got bought by Speedway and now they got bought by 7-Eleven. You know, 7-Eleven was very prominent, remember, when we were working. Oh, that's... Thomas and Hamlin there. Mm -hmm. Right here at Rice in the Front. Yep. I thought their 7-Eleven was going to go out of business, to be honest with you, because it seemed like they were all just selling the private sector people. potential victims left on the street. <laughs> yeah, the proverbial, you could shoot a cannon down the street and not hit a thing tonight. You know, the next time we go out, I am going to, I'm going to go over uh, Winter Carnival treasure hunts. Because, you know, ever since I was little, my, uh, my parents took me out to hunt for the Winter Carnival treasure. No, I did not. Actually, that's how I got to know my way around St. Paul. Originally, was hunting for treasure, the medallion, so to speak. My parents would take me out all the time. Even I got to skip school when I was in see in high school, just go look for the treasure. Oh, nice! And you know, it's been hidden so many places. A good friend of mine, Kathy Hogan, actually found it once. You doing okay? What's going on? We got it. The police don't like me. Oh, well, well, I'm sorry about that. What do you got a fire extinguisher for? Because I took it from the apartment building. Oh, you did? You gonna sell Can it? Can I have it? You gonna sell it? No. Well, is it your apartment building? Or where are you headed? I need to go to my house. Where's that at? Oh, Just for God. info, there's oh, a... Oh, we can't give you a ride in this car. I'm sorry. Where are you coming from? I'm going from the store. Oh. We'll check on you in a little bit, okay? You're, going, you. you're making good progress. I love you, John. You too, thank you. She, she was sober. Yes, she was. It's the rain has stopped. I think she'll make it okay. I don't quite know why she's got that fire extinguisher, but... <laughs> Never know when you might come across a fire, I guess. Well, she said she loved us. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. out now actually yeah it is it feels Six, great 66 no rain we have to open the windows tonight we work for a couple more hours actually <laughs> a couple more twinkies and a little mountain dew oh well, is this guy taking off once he saw us well we should just so this is a lot of drug sales go on here sales you got an item 
Five, Victor Papa Lima. Oh. We'll stop where he's driving by. We'll just, we'll just see what happens here. White guy buying drugs? <laughs> well, Has the look. Well, uh, three, one, five, ten, three, 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 ten, They've got semi control, right? Yep. I mean, it's well, it to M &H. clear right. You're in fire with one. There's gotta be people closer than us, wouldn't you think? Thick. I didn't hear many responders though. <coughs> Did you? No. Because that road's closed, uh, you can't get, can't get the mini ha. I'm thinking up Not to fail into arcade. You think so? Yeah. And then and then that, you gotta come back down. Yeah. So if you didn't catch all of that, the officer at uh, the m &H had the suspect in custody who was fighting with him and called a code yeah, four, which yeah. means for those of you who don't know that the situation's all under control. Anyhow, back to the Winter Carnival Treasure. We're gonna, we're gonna, on our patrols, talk about where it was hidden in the past. I mean, a lot of them I remember off the top of my head because I failed several times to find it. <laughs> I did, when it was at Wakefield back in 1972 or 73, I did get to touch it. It was in a buggy wheel, and the gentleman next to me found it, and I begged him to let me touch the... Really? Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> a buggy wheel at Wakefield Park on the south end of Wakefield. Mike Beeson and I, when we were working Como, kind of once in a while we go out digging, you know, we sure. came very, very close once when it was between a between a, a tree and a telephone pole on that road that goes to the conservatory. But I know a lot of people will have oh, what wrong the parking lot. A lot of people have sim I go similar stories. Three two nine is here, sir. So here. Next week, bring your winter carnival treasure hunting stories. Yeah, I gotta be clear. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, gonna roam around <laughs> roam around the city. I know he's probably busy right down the block. And we might even tell the infamous Jim C Campbell. Yeah, there you go. Medallion story. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the long and the short of it is... Your tail to copy. You can't always believe the guy that's yelling the medallion's been found. <laughs> oh. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us. We're in our parking lot. You get a first-hand view of where we get, uh, where we get supplies for our car. Thanks so much, and we'll... Start the man down, 296 and feel free to send us your questions, 651-448-3810. Thanks so much. See you the next time we're out.